A lot of the prominent figures that I've met in Columbus, Ohio often have really interesting backstories. They often come from different aspects of life, walk through many different paths, and as a result, use those skills to not only better themselves, but to then better their community. Hi, my name is Andre Barrett, and welcome to Keeping the Recipes, where the wisdoms and recipes of life are shared across all tables. This week I got to speak with Baba Shango, an artist and prominent figure here in Columbus, Ohio, whose backstory really spoke to me. Through being a Vista and the many different endeavors that he and his friends went through, he has now taken those experiences and turned them into something that gives back to the community. A gallery here on Brighton. I kept this episode short because I really want you guys to come out and see the gallery for yourself. So without further ado, my awesome, awesome guest for today is... Chief Baba Olugbala Shango Badina, the Oboboga Eliwo Yijise. What inspires you? What inspires me? Yes. I guess to help bring about change. Mm. Help to bring heaven on earth today now. What do you mean about that, sir? Well, instead of waiting to die and be in heaven, which nobody's knows about. Nobody's died and come back and says it's great or anything. I, mm -hmm. I believe that we should try and create a heaven on earth today now mm. and using virtue as our guide. Can you give me an example of that? Like... Well, take example this gallery. We started this gallery back in 78. We incorporated under Urban Culture Arts Foundation. Wow. And so what we try to do here is mm -hmm. Uh, have an influence on our community, our culture, our environment. Uh, we try to bring about harmony. Uh, we try to create beautiful images, use symbols that uh, gives us wisdom and knowledge. Yes. So this gallery we incorporated in 78 under Urban Cultural Arts Foundation. When, mm -hmm. when I left uh, Ohio State, my uh, advisor, Mr. Stranges, this was back in 68, he says, son, would you like to drop out before we flunk you out and you have these grades on your permanent record? <laughs> and this was during the time of Vietnam. And mm -hmm. uh, so you, I could be drafted, but so I joined VISTA. This is Volunteers in Service to America, hmm. and they sent me to uh, Bronx, New York. And they say, you see that high rise? I said, yeah, and they say, go organize. So I had to knock on everybody's door, find a consensus, get someone to agree to let us have meetings there, and then organize them. The main thing of organization is never allow them to separate you. Never allow them to say, you're the leader, and you come in, we just talk to the leader. He says, now there's no leader, you talk to everybody. So that was the main just behind organization. Then I went to Boston and did two years intern, mm. uh, community organizing in the South End for an organization called SNAP. Mm. And uh, most of my friends there were musicians. They went to school at Berkeley. Uh, some of them are great musicians now. And so I organized them and we opened up a coffee house in the basement of uh, a coffee house in the basement of a church, and we called it the Black Hand Vanguard. So I would organize uh, local musicians to come in and play on uh, Fridays and Saturday nights. We had tables with candles. We cooked uh, microbiotic food, tempura, and mm. things like that. And I would organize all the martial arts schools there, the Chinese and the, the uh, Egyptians, all of them. And then we would have a martial arts. Uh, demonstration. Then sometimes uh, famous musicians that would be playing on Boston Street at the uh, jazz jazz workshop in Paul's Mall there, they would come by and sometimes they would play and sometimes just sit and enjoy the music. So then I came back to Columbus back in uh, 76 and most of my friends here were visual artists. So I used the same skills that Vista gave me. I organized them, and I said, we need our own gallery. So we bought this house. Mm. 
Nobody lived in it like 14 years, so I gutted it and put it all back. And uh, we opened up in 89 to the public, and we've been going strong ever since, having at least four major shows a year. We have the African Village work, African Village Art Festival across the street yeah. 14 times. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, <clears throat> think tanks. Mm. We get come up with a topic, we get somebody with some expertise and uh, letting lead the discussion. We've had it on Wonder Blink, Do You Know? We had it on philosophy. We've had it on uh, any number of topics throughout the years. We've had book clubs here, paint bars here. Uh, last week we just had a tea, a big tea. You know how the old women used to have teas. And they all dress up and have tea and mm -hmm. Well, we had one of those here uh, uh, last week. So that's uh, what we do and what we've been doing. Uh, that, everybody, has been today's episode of Keeping the Recipes. If you would like to listen to this episode um, or any of our other episodes, you can check us out at keepingtherecipes.com, also on, bu on Buzzsprout under the name Keeping the Recipes. Um, and you can also listen to our, our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Also, if you would like to watch any of our previous episodes, um, you can check us out on YouTube under the name Transit Arts. We have a playlist named Keeping the Recipes.